What's up guys, in today's video we're going to do a little bit of some simple hard surface in Blender, so let's hop right into it. So the first thing I'd actually like to do is add in a cylinder, that's what we're going to start with, so shift A and then cylinder, and I'm going to change the vertex count to 64, it's going to make it nice and uh, smooth, so we're just going to do that. And then what I want to do with a uh, hard ops, we're going to press Q to sharpen it, and that'll give us that nice smooth effect around the cylinder. So now what I want to do is rotate this 90 degrees over the Y axis, like that. And then I'm just going to scale this little bit on the X as well. So now we're going to kind of have this shape here going on. And let's also apply the scale, because the scale is not uniform, just in case we add bevels or whatever. So Control A and apply that scale to lock it in. So now we're just telling Blender, hey, I'm done scaling it and just, you know, perceive this as a uniform mesh. So any adjustments we make will be nice and even. So now what I want to do is go into edge mode. And for anyone new to the channel, I use an add-on called Machine Tools to go into um, edit mode very quickly. It's a free add-on. You can get that on Gumroad or Blender Market. It's called Machine Tools. I always link it in the description if you want to pick it up. So we're going to go into edge mode here. I'm going to press Control R and we're going to pull a loop cut right over to, like right around here is fine I think. And then what I want to do is hop in the top view, so press the tilde key, hop in the top. And then I'm just going to go into face mode and we're going to extrude out half of this portion in this direction. Now to do that what we can actually do is go into wireframe mode with the Z key and simply box select um, all the vertices up to this point, so half of them basically. And then I'm just going to press E to extrude, and then we're going to kind of pull it up to about here, right? And just to clean up all this unnecessary, all these unnecessary edges here, we can select everything, press X, and then limited dissolve. Now I always set this to about 0.1 just to avoid any weird problems, and that's basically going to dissolve out any edges on flat surfaces that we don't need. So now the mesh is quite a bit cleaner compared to what we had before. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on, you know, developing this into a more natural looking piece because right now it's just a random looking shape. And by the way, I am using Cavity. I get this question all the time, but guys, I have a video on my Blender setup if you haven't seen it. So before you ask how I set up my Blender, watch that video because I answer most of your questions in there. But um, I usually get this question on each video. To turn on Cavity, you just go here and you turn that on. Very easy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to play with some shapes. So maybe what we could do is chamfer this, control B, get like a nice little effect like that, maybe a little bit smaller, like that. And then what I could maybe do is I could alt click on these edges and then bevel them just to give it make it a bit softer, you know what I mean? Kind of like that. Looks pretty decent. Um, maybe I'll leave that one sharp actually. Then I'm just going to go into side view here and I'm going to cut a hole straight through this. Now a really easy way to do this would be to just add in a cylinder and rotate it. So R, Y, and then 90. I'm going to scale that in. And then Q to sharpen it. We're just going to kind of pull it out this way. That looks pretty good. And then if we just shift click on the mesh with hard ops, I'm just going to press Q and then run a difference boolean like that. Now I do want to cut it all the way through, so I'm just going to pull that completely through the mesh. And then what I can actually do is start creating some more intricate designs kind of on the inside to give it that more mechanical feel. So we could do this directly to the cutter, you know, just add geometry to the cutter to reveal it on the main mesh, but um, just for simplicity, I'm happy with this. What I'm going to do is apply the boolean here. Let's go to the modifiers panel, apply it. And all I want to do is press Control R to drop in a loop cut and then control B to bevel it and we're gonna just do a one segment bevel here and then very simple I'm just gonna press E to extrude it right click and then alt S to scale in along those normals and usually what I do is I tick on the offset even button just to make sure it's even and now we kind of have a much more you know intricate looking piece now what I usually like to do is add in a little bit more dynamicism to it is that a word I don't know but I want to introduce more dynamic elements here and a really easy way to do that would be to kind of scale in these two edges. So Alt click, Alt Shift click, and then S, and we'll scale it on the X axis to about here. And then usually what I'll do is I'll just kind of add, you know, some bevels to it to kind of make it softer. You can Alt Shift click here as well. 
make some bevels. And now we're gonna have this really clean looking interior. It's a lot softer and kind of makes the mesh feel a little bit more, you know, uh, interesting. And we could even do this one more time. We could drop a loop cut in here and then just kind of do this, but in the reverse. So bevel it, extrude it, right click, Alt S to scale inwards like that. We could do something like this and then, you know, even scale that in a little bit. And that's just gonna really bring some more visual interest onto the inside of this model here, which is exactly what I wanna do. So bevel that as well. And now we have this really clean looking shape on the mesh. Now the question is, what do I wanna do over on the other side of it? Well, not too sure honestly, but I have an idea. I'm gonna take this piece and duplicate it. So Shift D to duplicate, right click, and I'm gonna flip it. So I can just scale it by negative one so SX negative one is gonna flip it on the X axis and then SY negative one is gonna flip it on the Y axis. And then what I can do is I can just grab it um, on the X axis, hold control to snap it. If it's not working, just go into increment snap up here and we'll grab it on the Y, hold control. And then I'll just kind of pull this in a little bit. So they're basically, you know, like a small little gap right there. And now we kind of have this cool looking shape going on. Now what I would like to do is cut another hole right through here. So I'm gonna add in a cylinder and we're gonna sharpen it and rotate it. So R, Y, 90 and just scale it in a bit. And I'm gonna move this so that way it's kind of through and we're gonna cut through this one. So select this and then shift click this, Q and then difference. Now we're gonna have a nice Boolean right there. And then same idea for this side. Um, what I can do with hard ops is press Q, ever scroll, to recall that cutter. And I could actually just duplicate this cutter with Shift D, press Y to move it, then hold Control. And if it's not snapping in there perfectly, um, we'll just go into the exact side view. It should snap better. Cool. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run a difference boolean on this one as well. And now we're gonna kind of have this shape going on. Let me go ahead and apply the booleans in both of these. A really easy way to do that is to select both of them. Q, Operation, Smart Apply. And I'm getting a Python error for some reason. Let me do these one at a time. Actually, it worked. I probably just need to re, um, uh, reinstall my Blender from scratch. I probably just have some conflicting add-ons. I haven't reset Blender in quite a few months. Um, so speaking of, if your Blender ever does throw random Python errors, Ryu has a video on purging Blender that'll usually fix all your problems. I'll have a, um, that pop up on the screen now if you wanna check that video out if you're ever getting issues like that. But anyways, it, it worked, so that's what's important here. Probably just messing with some other plugins in the software. But um, what I wanna do now is I want to maybe add in, maybe add in a chamfer here. Not too sure I like it just cutting through. So I can Alt-click and then Alt-Shift-click over here. It's gonna be a regular bevel, but I don't know. Do I want a regular bevel? It could work. We could try a chamfer as well. And let me shift click on sharpen to reset that. That looks pretty decent actually. I think we get away with that. And then same idea for right here. Bevel it, shift click on that. And now we're gonna have um, two, two chamfers on either side. So this is pretty cool. Let's see how this looks in rendering mode though. So I'm gonna go into cycles, which I'm already in. And I'm gonna go into our rendering view. Right now I can't see too much, so I'm gonna load in the abandoned slipway HDRI. It's a very nice overcast neutral lighting. It'll light this up very well. So basically just go here to environment texture and then load in the HDRI. You can go to polyhaven.com and download the abandoned slipway that I'm using here for free. So I'll go to my HDRI's folder and load in that abandoned slipway. Nice and easy. It looks pretty good. And what I usually like to do is I like to start playing with the material. So add in a new material here. Give this one the same material. And we're just going to make this metallic because this is probably some sort of metal. Could maybe drop the roughness a bit, make it more glossy. Drop the base color a little bit as well. And one really cool thing you can do, notice we don't have any bevels on this object. We could add them with hard ops real quick, but you could also use a bevel shader if you wanted to, and it's going to give you um, basically an identical result just procedurally. I don't like using the bevel shader if I can just do it with a modifier, 
but it can work pretty well if you want to get those nice soft effects without using an actual modifier. You can kind of see the difference here, before and after. So pretty cool stuff. And by the way, in this case, it would actually work perfectly because this is an example of an impossible bevel. Since this is um, this lines up with the top here perfectly, right when the bevel runs, it's going to overlap, so it's just going to cause problems. So instead of doing this with the geometry, you could actually do this with a bevel modifier, and it's um, you're not going to run into a weird issue like that. Notice how clean the bevel is. No problems at all. So in this case, I'm just going to use the bevel modifier. You can also reduce the radius if it's too hard, maybe like 0.02. Now we're going to have this really simple shape going on, and maybe what we could even do is add in a plane. You know, do something like this. And now you're going to have this really cool looking, um, looking result. All that uh, white light is going to bounce back onto the model, and it's going to look super, super clean. Now if you want to know how I made the thumbnail to render this, I'll quickly give you the rundown. Um, I have tons of videos on like the basics of rendering if you want to check those out. But just as a quick rundown, um, basically we can add in a plane here, then add in a camera, so shift A camera. And I'm going to go up here, or I'm just going to press control alt 0 on the numpad. If you don't have a numpad, just go here to align active camera to view, it does the same thing. And usually I'll just scale this up, you know, we can... Um, take this and just find a good position. Sometimes I'll even adjust the focal length and make it more orthographic by making it higher. So you could do something like that. Basically, the higher the focal length, the more kind of zoomed it'll be and the more of an orthographic effect you're gonna get. You're gonna see if I go to like 225 here, it's basically the same as if I change this here to orthographic. It's almost the same thing versus if this was um. 50 millimeters and I set it to orthographic. It's completely different. You see what I mean? So usually I don't use orthographic. I just make the perspective focal length a lot higher. It's going to give you a pretty decent result. And just like that, guys, you can make a super simple re render of a simple model like this in just a few minutes. So I'm going to press a G, Z, Z to kind of move this back. Camera angles is a whole different topic. We have a complete course on rendering. Um, if you want to check that out on our website, but um, I'm just going to show you the really simple setup here for a render, just like this. And you could even make the floor here. Let's add a new material to the floor. You could make, make it metallic, maybe. You know, drop the roughness, have like a nice reflection to it. Um, but I'm actually happy with where it was before. I think it looked pretty good. And we're just going to make sure this plane is actually um, sitting on it, just like that. Gonna look the most realistic that way then if you want to go back into camera view you just press zero on the numpad and you'll be back there and just to let you know guys renders as simple as this are almost always better than a lot of the stuff i'm seeing from beginners don't go over complicated trying to make crazy complex scenes when you don't really know what you're doing at first start with simple renders like this and oftentimes they're going to be way better than people who are trying to go a bit outside of their skill set Simple renders like this really sell your image and really sell the product. So I'd highly recommend not going too overboard if you don't know what you're doing. So this is going to be um, very powerful for a basic portfolio piece if you're new to Blender. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. If it helped, drop me a thumbs up. And also head over to our website. We have a ton of products over there that you'll probably enjoy related to hard surface modeling. There's something for everyone. Environments, games, regular modeling, design. Check that out, link in the description. And that's it for this video. Thanks a bunch, and we'll see you in the next one.